So Nadia here from Addicted Magazine with Felix from the Cat Empire. Say hello. Hi, right, it's good to be here, Nadia. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much for not only coming to meet me, but for coming back to Toronto. You guys were here last April, I want to say. Is that correct? I think so. I think so, yeah. So what is it that drove you guys to come back? Well, we have a great audience here in Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, it's summertime. It's winter where we are at home. <laughs> we're playing some um, great festivals, some really nice um, headline theatre shows. That's so right. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer for us here, really. We have a really, really... Um, you know, wonderful response, and the shows are good, and we like the people, we like the the atmosphere, and the you know the countryside's beautiful as well. It is beautiful, beautiful landscape here for sure, and it's yeah. always lovely to hear that someone has decided to vacation here, seeking yeah. out warm weather, especially coming from a place like Australia. And I've always said that Toronto is there's no better place to be in the summertime than this city because yeah. you know we we love our summer, that's for sure. Yeah, and it was great. It was great. We walked, we went out to dinner last night and, and walked through the city, and it just has a really vibrant lively feeling to it oh yeah i always joke that you know people in the winter time here they're all bundled up you can't mm. tell you know what anybody looks like and then all of a sudden you know the coats come off the smiles yeah, come the on faces and you know like it's, it's great to hear that someone else yeah. sees that especially coming from a place like australia totally. well in australia we don't have those those deep winters and so i mean here you really notice it when you're in summer that people are just that little bit more excited about life God, yes, <laughs> yeah. that's exactly yeah. it. We start to love life again the second the sun comes out and the warmth is on our skin. Although you do hear people complaining about the extreme heat. I am not one of those people, don't you worry. Mm. So you guys came back within uh, a year and a half, which is awesome. Another great thing that you guys did was drop a new record. The last time I interviewed you, mm -hmm. you hinted that something was something coming. coming. Yeah. So tell me about the new album. The new album is called Rising with the Sun. Mm -hmm. um, it was recorded in the same studio uh, as we did Steal the Light. And um, it's, it's got a lot of color to it, a lot of vibrancy. Um, I feel it's a very dynamic album. Mm -hmm. um, it's been well received. It debuted number one in Australia, which is the first time for us since uh, Two Shoes. And oh, wow. So it's, you know, it's, and it's, you know, we've played a lot of festivals with it. The songs have jumped from the studio to the stage in a really it's seamless and natural uh, way. And that's incredible. So the album's been, you know, behaving, behaving in a really exciting way for us. <laughs> the new know. baby's been behaving itself. <laughs> yeah, well, it is a bit like that. You know, you put your trust in these, in these songs and this album because mm -hmm. you know, we're going to do the miles. We're such a live band, you know. Yeah. So, so we know that we're going to put miles into, um, into each album, and mm -hmm. it really helps when the songs, uh, have got an energy of, of their own. Mm -hmm. So, so you can sort of let them play themselves, that's rather wonderful. than having to work to too hard to bring them to life you know that's fantastic would you say that you know is there a difference between this album and and the past one like how has that kind of progression been for you guys i think that you know the last two albums we've done steal the light and rising with the sun mm -hmm. could be considered a kind of brother sister combo oh, you know we did it with the same producer the, um in the same studio um in our hometown it had a very natural feeling to it and mm -hmm. also when we came to those two albums we'd really you know, we'd had a long career until then, and we wanted, we chose to make them. We chose to really kind of return to an atmosphere that we recognised um, was part of the band when we started it out, mm -hmm. and, and we could kind of try and reconnect to that atmosphere with all of the experience we'd had. You know, over a thousand shows and, and a, a long, a long career, and so. Mm -hmm. I feel like they're, they're a bit of a return to form or a kind of a renaissance for us. Yeah. So they've, you know, they've been both both really solid albums. That's a really, really interesting perspective that you guys do have all this experience under your belts. I mean, you're, you've been a band for as long as a, a whole teenager yeah, at this point. that's true. So, you know, kind of thinking back to, to the inception of the band back in the early 2000s to now, you know, how, how would you kind of characterize that growth in that path? Like, has it been, you know, did it come natural? Did it just kind of evolve? I know that there's been some lineup changes. You guys have obviously, you know, toured the world and round yeah. and round. You know, like, it, what would you kind of say about that, that amazing history that you guys have amassed at this point? Well, I think two things. One is there are teenagers now that are, that are as old as... as, as they, they would have been born as, you know, when the band was born, which mm -hmm. is great because it means you look out each night and you see not just a nostalgic audience who's followed you there's there's a, a real fresh youthful feeling to it as well as people who have been you know with us for a long time so that's really um allowed us to to grow as musicians insofar as it makes it very exciting to play live mm -hmm. and we play for you know we play long sets um we, we give as much as we can each night we've been known as a live band and mm -hmm. i think when you play as many i mean i'm not sure what the count is yet but it, it must be you know close to 1100 even more than that mm -hmm. um shows it's Something happens where you you can start to realize someone else's sound second nature, you know, and and whereas we used to kind of try and come up with a sound more in the early days to try and establish ourselves, now mm -hmm. there's an inherent sound that's, yeah. that's grown over mm -hmm. a long time. So all of those things, the crowd mixed with the miles we've done and and the hours we've played together, mm -hmm. 
have, have turned into a, um, a kind of a sound. And on a good night, it's you know, it's really exciting to be part of that. That's such a wonderful thing. I love how you, you know, obviously have touched on, you know, some of these kids that were literally born right around the same time yeah. that, that your band was born. Are you seeing that there is kind of that insurgence of a, a youthful audience that are just getting to know your music for the first time? Totally, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's and that's the reason, I think, why the band's still together, you know. Like, as soon as the Ken Empire becomes... Like I said, too nostalgic, then mm -hmm. it dies. You know, yeah. it doesn't want to be. It wants to be something that's that's always a bit surprising. You know, that's the nature of this outfit. And um, so it is. Like to see, firstly, like a demographic which is really unpredictable each night. It can, you know, it's really different people who come to see our shows, mm -hmm. and they don't fit into any categories. I don't think. And and on top of that, the youthfulness of it. You know, there's so many young people who come and who are just discovering the band now. Mm -hmm. That it, it it does keep it really exciting and make us feel like um, you know there's a lot of life in, in this animal yet. And that's got to be a really fun thing too, because I'm sure at this point you've got you know fans who who grew up with you guys, mm. you know, then went off and started their own families and are probably now exposing their totally. own children to you guys. Yeah. So you're helping a whole generation of music lovers <laughs> kind of come into their own. Yeah, well, it's true. I mean, there's a lot of there are a lot of um, I, I suppose like. I'm thinking of my own upbringing and there are certain bands where, you know, we, as a family, we just kind of love them, you mm -hmm. know, you get drunk and dance around the kitchen bench <laughs> kind of thing to certain bands and it's nice to know that um, that may have happened with, with songs that we've made um, and, and you, you do see families that have, that have come and, and people who have made new families and, and been with the band and that's a, you know, it's kind of unimaginable when, when you think about those things as a teenager starting a band that mm -hmm. that may happen and, and now that we've been together long enough for a teenager to become a teenager. <laughs> it's it's a it's a new way of thinking about things. But you know, it's a you get a kick out of that that stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm really excited. I've never seen you guys live before. Oh, great. So now I'm not only excited to see you guys live, but to kind of you know take a peek around because that's the thing that yeah. I love when I've never seen a band is I really just get a feel for for their fans that love yeah, them, yeah, totally. and that totally infuses something into the show. So I'm really excited. Uh, speaking of you guys live, I've heard you uh, from many different people called one of the best live bands out there. Great. What what you say to that it's <laughs> pretty tall uh, it's, tall order yeah I mean that's it's great I mean I, I take it with a grain of salt because mm -hmm. I, one thing about being a musician is you you get more and more reverence for for music mm -hmm. and for other musicians and so I, I listen to some older players mm -hmm. our bands and I'm just blown away and and, yeah. and I, I'm not ready yet to be but but I suppose it's nice if someone really <laughs> likes the band live then, then that's fantastic and, and we, we have had a career playing a lot of festivals and a lot of shows mm -hmm. and people come back so there must be something that they really <laughs> enjoy about it there's definitely something um, you guys are doing it's hard right. to reflect on those statements though, you know, <laughs> because you just I don't know music's a lifelong pursuit you it, know? Is. it really is and, and that's one thing that, that being around music teaches you is that you don't reach a certain point you always keep on listening and you always keep on working on something and, mm -hmm. and there's so much amazing music out there it's, it's mm -hmm. an incredible life to lead in, in that sense, you know. Oh, for sure. Not I everything mean. around it, but the music, the music itself, and, and <laughs> to listen and to play music and to write music and to hear his songs. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an amazing life. Yeah. It's definitely one of the best jobs in the world that you guys are doing, and I, I commend you for that. I commend you for sticking with it and continuing to give the world so much good music. <laughs> I, I love that. Um, one thing that I wanted to ask as well, because you guys have been a band for a while, um, you know, there's lots of young, kind of aspiring musicians that, that read our magazine, and we like to, as I was mentioning earlier, feature emerging talent so if you were to give any potential advice to you know to someone trying to break into this industry um, you know that's maybe feeling a little bit uh, concerned about it or has some worries what what would you say I think the only advice I could give is um, is concentrate on the music itself mm -hmm. don't concentrate on everything around it you know there's so much talk about what you need to do in the industry and mm -hmm. uh, there's so much clutter and noise and 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 what you're expected to present mm -hmm. you know in, in, in terms of an image like that but that's just a pale 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 distant second to, to what your true experience is yeah. um, which is to, to write and to be a part of music which is um, almost a spiritual pursuit in a way mm -hmm. so I would say um, no matter if you like the the kind of most extraordinary new pop star or if you're you know a blues musician or if you're a classic whatever it is mm -hmm. just just to let to let music be the, the front runner and to wake up in the morning and concentrate on that rather than your Facebook page <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say the social media is probably a big part of the noise that comes around it that's well, really it really is. wonderful advice. Well, you because know, social media social media in some ways asks of you to present an identity and mm -hmm. this is such bullshit in that way because really you play music to to lose yourself in, in in something which is greater than than you as a single person and yeah and and that's um that's the true 
gift, you know, that, that's the true experience. Oh, the rest sure. of it is, you take it with a big grain of salt and enjoy the game if you can and, mm -hmm. and suffer it if you have to, but, but you know. But I love the music, love that's the, music. the key. Yeah. Um, just touching quickly on social media, because that was one thing that when I chatted with you guys last year, that, that you, you guys seem to use social media for a true kind of higher purpose, and it was one of the, the tools <laughs> that you guys used to have your fans connect to you and say, hey, Please come to, I, I, I believe uh, someone mentioned that you guys went to South America for the first time based yeah, on a social media campaign. Yeah, based on a social media campaign. Yeah, that's true. Look, in that way, it, it can be um, really, really useful. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, there's, there's been plenty of instances where that's um, happened. And we do have a very responsive audience. We've been very fortunate like mm -hmm. that. And we're sort of slow to catch on to social media because we started out as a word of mouth band. Yeah. You know, we started out. And you started out before social yeah, media existed. Well, <laughs> totally, we did. Yeah, I mean, our first shows were at um, the Adelaide Fringe Festival and at the Edinburgh mm -hmm. Um, French festival and, and those were like shows where we had to do um, play one night to 20 people mm -hmm. and then play the next night play so well that night that, that 40 people would come the next night and then it's on like that really old school way of, yeah. of performing that snowball effect yeah. kind of thing I think that that's kind of one of the best things that you guys have done is you really leverage social media as a way to communicate with your fans and listen to them yeah. so is, is there maybe another potential place that you guys uh, will visit that you've never visited before because the call to action has happened well I mean that, that, that happened in South Africa and in South America and they, yeah. were, they were both really great um, shows that we did over there and so I mean that's when that's when social media is great and interesting when it can mm -hmm. kind of mobilise people and yeah. and um, make things happen. I think it. I think we kind of fail pretty miserably when it's just social media for the sake of yeah. you know more content or something like mm -hmm. that because it's we didn't come we weren't born into that world. And no. so it's always felt like a kind of a, a new alien yeah. kind of beast. Um, and we're, and it's we're, kind we're, of a bit we're of, of dinosaurs <laughs> like slow, slow to catch on, but you know. Um, but you're leveraging it in, in the right way. I mean, I, mean, I hope so, yeah. And I mean, look, it'd be great to go go to some other places through that kind of thing. And yeah. it is good to, you know, stay in touch with with fans, I suppose, in a, in a way. That's, that's quite interesting. That's awesome. Well, you guys are playing here in Toronto tonight, and I know you're doing a little bit of the festival circuit. When are you guys going to be going back home and making us some new music? <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> a lot of the time music is born on the road for me. Like, I don't write much of it here, but I kind of kind of get to a point of exhaustion on tour where I start feeling really lonely and, oh, and no. desolate and then um, and then from there usually certain feelings or openings come up and, and then I come home and, and, and I'm able and to process it. It's not to say that there's an awful lot of joy performing as well um, but that combination of like road weariness mixed with like too much joy mm -hmm. it causes this very strange state of mind to happen and, and, and so so maybe after this year's touring, which is pretty pretty extensive, <laughs> yeah, um, there'll be some new music to come out of it. But you know, I don't, I don't know yet. Fingers crossed. Yeah, we will we'll all see. keep our hopes alive for that. Thank you very much, Felix. You've been wonderful. That's my pleasure. Sorry, guys, about the drums, but hey, it's part of the job. <laughs> yeah, you get an interview in the theater. This is what you get. Exactly. Thanks yeah. so much. Bye.